Welcome to another set musings. So this week I've decided to stay back before this period here. So this is where we started the series. And when initially I started, I was sort of going to go forward, but you know, rules get broken. And uh, last week I went back because I wanted to look at the prosperous Bro- the prosperous bloom deck from here, which was tied in. I suppose to the um, this, so the Pro Tour Paris 97. So here's all the bloom decks, but in amongst it was this big blue deck. So I figured this week I would talk about a big blue deck, Um, seeing as it's a blue deck that doesn't purely rely on non-creature spells. There's a 15 creature package in here so I thought it'd be interesting to take a look at that seeing as I don't think we've seen many decks where that's the case so far so let's dive straight in and have a look at this deck so we have two snake baskets four to cast x sacrifice it and the x dictates how many cobra tokens you get to put into play and you treat those tokens as 1-1 one, one green creatures play this ability as a sorcery we've got three lots of four here and one of three creatures in the form of cloud elemental which is two and a blue with flying it's a two three cloud elemental can't block only sorry cloud elemental can block only creatures with flying Three and a blue floodgate. That's a zero five wall. If floodgate gains flying, bury it. If floodgate leaves play, it deals to each non blue creature without flying one damage for each two islands you control. We've got mana war in here. So two and a blue, it's a two two. When mana war comes into play, return target creature to owner's hand and water spout gin two and two blue for four four which is pretty good for the time, yeah, and, and it has flying. But the downside is during your upkeep, return an untapped island you control to owner's hand or bury water spout gin. So you'll see here, for those creatures, if you just look at their power and toughness versus their casting cost, it would seem to be you know, pretty powerful for the time particularly the ones that have flying, but there's various downsides. So this one, you know, if you don't pay the cost, then, uh, yeah, it ends up in your graveyard. This one over here, the Cloud Elemental, can only can only block creatures with flying. This is obviously a wall, so it's Defender. And Mana War is interesting because... You have to be a bit careful with this. Um, when it comes into play, you notice this is a return target creature to owner's hands. There's no may here. So if, you're, if your opponent doesn't have any creatures in play, then that means you're going to have to bounce your own stuff. Of course, you might want to do that in certain decks. Um, so that's something you can leverage and maybe we'll talk about that a bit later when we go through some of these other cards we've got enchantment and enchantment one in actual fact uh, flooded shoreline two blue return two islands you control to owner's hand return target creature to owner's hand we have a ton of instances 17 there's no sorceries in the deck so you could argue, you know, apart from the land, it is mostly creatures and instants. We've got Boomerang. So two blue, return target permanent to owner's hand. We've got Desertion, three and two blue. Counts as a target spell. But if that spell is an artifact or summon spell, put that card into play under your control, as though it were just played. We've got Dissipate, another counter spell. But um, instead of just countering the spell and ending up in your in the opponent's graveyard, um, the spell gets exiled. 
we have an impulse. So for uh, one in the blue, look at the top four cards of your library, put one of them into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library. Shuffle your library afterwards. And then memory lapse, one in the blue, counter target spell. Put that spell on top of owner's library. So it's interesting when you look at the counter spells, if we just ignore the impulse where everything is ending up, this one puts it back to the hand. This one puts it back to the library. This one exiles it. Now this one, um, if the second clause isn't met, or if this clause is not met, then it obviously goes into the graveyard. But if it is, then you know it bounces onto your side of the battlefield. So I think that's an interesting set of different style of bouncing going on there. Then we have our land base, which looks interesting. You can see all of the cards in the deck are either blue or, in this case, colourless. And we have a single planes lurking here. So we have 16 islands. We also have four flood planes, which is this um, land that comes into play tapped and then you sack it to search for a planes or an island. In this case, there is just one planes. And then we've got four quick sands. So that you tap them, add colorless manager mana pool, or you can tap sacrifice it, target taken creature without flying, gets minus one, minus two until end of turn. Now, the reason why we have planes presence in the deck, and it's just not totally mono blue is is the presence of these white sideboard cards and additionally we also have some planes in here because if we were just to sideboard these you can see we might run into quite a bit of problems i mean yes we can sack this to get this but just having one copy of the planes in the deck probably isn't so so good so we've got two copies here we can also sideboard in. Uh, the white cards in the sideboard are disenchant, so a way of dealing with artifacts or enchantments. And this card, which is interesting, Honourable Passage, I think we've seen this before in previous episodes when we've talked about um, decks with white cards in them. So this is, you know, initially a damage prevention spell for target creatures or you, um, but also if the source of that damage happens to be red, then Honourable Passage deals to the source's controller an amount of damage equal to the amount of damage prevented. So there are the two white cards. The rainy side board is made up of Mind Harness, single blue, play only on a red or green creature, so specifically for red or green decks or decks that contain red or green cards. It's got cumulative upkeep on it though. Single colourless, or sorry, single mana of any colour. Gain control of enchanted creature. So that's pretty cool for a single blue, but you do have this cumulative upkeep. Then we've got power sync. For X and a blue. It's another counter spell. Twist in this one is that um, it counters the target spell unless that spell's caster plays an additional X, and obviously you decide how much X you want to invest into this. That player draws and pays all mana from lands and mana pool until X is paid. He or she must also draw and pay mana from other sources if desired. That'd be interesting to to look at that. It is a card we've looked at before, actually, but we'll have, we'll have a look again. Quick look at the mana curve. So you can see there's no one drops. Everything's two or above. So I suppose the pretty straightforward strategy with this. Um, yeah, you know, you're using the control spells to slow your opponent down until you can get your creatures out 
and start swinging for damage. But obviously once the creatures are out, you can then use these as, you know, counter spells to prevent, um, you know, the creatures being removed. Because you'll notice that all of these, well, say all of them, so one, two, was it three here, all just target counter spells. It's only this one that deals with specifically with permanence. Um, so these all have multiple uses in terms of the you know the card types they can counter. Here's the artwork for our planes. But of course the bulk of the deck deck is islands so there's our island artwork that we might have access to if we played the uh, land from from mirage so floodplain we've seen this cycle before interesting to see where this has cropped up um yeah You know, you can see, I don't think this is the sort of card that, that regularly turns up in Commander product. But certainly it's turned up in Forgotten Realms and Dominaria United. It did crop up in the Jewel decks. And online in Vintage Masters. Obviously you've got the problem with it coming to play tapped, so it's on the slow side. And we've seen this in previous weeks. It's, it's part of that um, cycle from the set. Let's look at mannerless lands this week. I don't think we've specifically looked at this before. So these would be all lands that don't specifically mention tapping for, you know, tapping for mana. And obviously now we would more than likely see this in the form of things like Evolving Wilds or any type of dual land where you're sacrificing it to go and fetch something else. So basically fetch lands. But obviously fetch lands that don't tap for mana. In fact, I'm not even sure if there are any fetch lands that also enable you to tap for mana. Um, but here specifically, I'm more interested in things that have, you know, no ability on them to, to tap for mana. So let's put these in uh, in a certain order, shall we? Because uh, with this, to me anyway, it's always been a thing that I've associated more with is older magic cards, but we'll see if I'm correct in that in that assumption. So yeah, you can see quite a number from Arabian Nights and quite a number from from Legends of the Dark. This one's an interesting one. I actually have this. Um this was um, a card that accompanied a publication. It's a Harper Prism book promo. I think I have a couple of these actually. And then you can see there was some around sort of Ice Age, Glacial Chasm, Hall of Mists, Ice Flow. There's from ones from Alliances here. And then the aforementioned uh, Fetchlands from uh, 
Mirage. And then we had some more here. So this was onslaught period. And I'm just looking to see, you know, like from back here, so Thorin Glaciers was the first. Oh no, actually the one before, sorry, this one does actually search for land. So where's one that doesn't, doesn't isn't a fetch land? So this one here. So ice flow. So yeah, ice from Ice Age. We didn't really see a land that didn't tap for mana that also wasn't a fetch land until, yeah, Dark Depths, which was the, oh yeah, this was Cold Snap. <laughs> so that that's r actually rather appropriate, isn't it? Because Cold Snap was that supposedly lost set, supposedly. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I find the, the theme decks from that period quite fun. I think I've got a couple of those where they sort of mix in cards from both Cold Snap and from the original blocks. So that would be Ice Age and Alliances. And then, of course, uh, we get on to the Terramorphic Expanse. This is interesting. So this was from, was it Time Spiral? Where it comes into play as a copy of a land. So some more fetches. These are obviously faster. Downside is you pay life. And we have Eye of Ugin, which fetches colourless creatures. And we have more fetch lands. Yeah, so you can see just this was definitely a thing from back in the day. And so more modern cards, it does tend to be a fetch land. Okay, so quicksand. So this does tap for mana. Uh, it taps for one colourless mana, but also has this interesting utility on it where you can sack it. But in this case, what the sac um, what the sacrificing it does is target stacking creature without flying, and that creature gets minus one, minus two. Yeah, I, that's where I remember. So I, I was trying to think through, like, when was the first time I saw this card? So, yeah, it's pretty well documented on the channel. 10th edition was my contemporaneous step on point. So that's the point at which I started buying magic cards and the set had, you know, pretty much just come out. I think it was the core set was 10th edition and it was just going into the following sets after that. So that's when I first saw Quicksand. In terms of the printing, yeah, so Visions 9th edition. The artwork changed for Worldwide, and I remember it from this. I don't know which I prefer. I think maybe this artwork. I don't know. It's got more trees in it. I like trees. Okay. Okay, so yeah. Let's talk about utility lands. Well, there's a lot of utility lands. What utility lands shall we talk about? Hmm. I'll tell you what, let's get these in order first of all. 
That's always a good thing. I suspect if I do this, um, of course I forgot to, I think I forgot to copy that in. I like utility lads. Ah, of course, desert, yes. Oh, these were really interesting as well. These, uh, the cycle of legends, from the cycle from legends. And, yeah, if you remember, there was that interesting cycle in alliances as well, which we've, we've got come up before. I really like this, things like this. Yeah, just, oh, this makes me so happy. I just love lands that, that do something else apart from just generate mana. I mean, obviously with these, you know, they, they do cycling and there's a, a cycle of cyclers. And of course, these got reprinted, didn't they? These ones, the these ones that, that generate, um, or sorry, become creatures. Didn't they get reprinted for 10th edition? They, they all got reprinted, didn't they? I think. Was that that weird one where they, no. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they got all reprinted. Oh, and of course the Macadian mask ones. Now that wasn't, that wasn't a cycle. So I'm just trying to jump ahead of myself a little bit here. So we've got the cyclers from Urza block. So Urza's saga into Urza's legacy. And it was the yeah, Urza's legacy where we had the ones that turn into creatures. And then we have a single one from Zaz's Destiny. And then four from Acadian Mars, but they don't look like they're actually a cycle. And we got, what, three from Nemesis. What was that? Prophecy? Yep. Yeah. Prophecy. Such cool artwork. Oh, the Threshold Lands as well. From Odyssey. We have a do we have a full cycle here? An uncommon. I think we do, maybe. Not sure about that actually, I'd have to lay that out. Yeah, it looks like there is a sort of creature one. As I can see there's the yeah. Not sure there. Oh, Blink from Blink was Nexus. Yes. What do we have? Yeah, a cycle from. Was it Champions of Kamigawa? Hmm. 
Yeah, so we've got a few here that are full cycles from sets and some that are partials and some that span over multiple sets. You can see, you know, we've got um, some interesting utility lands from the original Ravnica block. Of course, Mouth of Ronom from another one from um, Cold Snap and Scrolling Sheets. Oh. Oh, and these ones from Future Sight. The one with the funky frames. Do you remember these, the hideaways? <coughs> it's funny. I'm not going to give the game away, um, but I'm working on a commander deck idea. And uh, I'm looking for like, utility lands, basically. So I'm thinking of putting out an additional Commander Fodder episode based on a question I asked in a, a Set Musings episode. And it'll probably be put out as an additional, well, it will be put out as an additional video alongside the regular Commander Fodder episode, just so I don't squeeze an episode out. And... Uh, Obviously, I've got that in the back of my mind, so I'm looking at sort of cool utility land to stick in the deck. Um, and, uh, oh, God. I don't know if anybody else gets this. I, there's certain, like... I don't even know what you'd call it. I mean, it's not really j just a mechanic, but it's a concept. There's something about utility lands that I just love. Um, and uh, obviously these get sort of included in that because, you know, you get life gain, I suppose. But of course there's so many. Can I go to the end? I don't want to... I mean, I could flick through all of these, but it would be a bit of a boring episode. Yep, this episode was just flicking through utility lands. I suppose I could do an episode <laughs> about utility lands, but not today. Uh, what are these from? Oh, the Lord of the Rings. Okay, fair enough. Just looking to see like what was the last regular set, so what's that? Frexia will be one. Was that Brothers War, yeah. Oh, that's made me very happy. Moving on to Snake Basket. We should reprint Snake Basket, I think. Just, you know, for a lot. Did you always get the impression that it's, it's funny when this just odd card turns up in a set and it doesn't really make any sense? I used to, I mean, I don't know whether that, it was just me imagining things, but I always used to quite enjoy it when you get this like random card. It almost looked like it was filling a slot in a Magic the Gathering set. And uh, yeah, it's another another thing that makes me smile. That cards that don't really belong in a set, but just there anyway. I mean, not to say they're not necessarily playable or not powerful, but they don't really fit when, with anything. Um, this was actually in a World Champion deck. Interesting. 
So when we get to the 2000s, I'll have to try and uh, see what that was in. We'll try and remember to see what it was in. Oh, no taggings. Um, what should we look at then for this? Because we want to look at something. So let me just dupe this. Okay. So let's artifact that generate tokens um, of some description. I suppose I should put to I'm doing this on the fly so I'm not as clean with some of these searches as I would normally be let me just take that down a bit um, where have I gone oh hang on has that been errated let me just check yeah It, that would be right. So it's it's just token now. Um, create might be a good thing to say then. Yep. Don't forget. Errata. And I'm also going to do uh, completely colourless as well. Did I get that right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I remember to copy it in. There we go. Oh. Ooh. Serpent generator. Okay. Oh, yeah, I have this. I couldn't resist buying this, I don't think. Because it generates these prism tokens what's this one this is creating wasps oh tetravis yeah remember that things like thopter squadron Yeah, there was quite a bit of stuff from what was this original Mirrodin block? Yeah, that was a cycle, wasn't it? I think there was a different something of. Caldra, but uh, but I could be wrong on that. Oh, and the mere battle sphere, yes. And then you've got these other cards, which just just spit out tokens when something happens, as opposed to where are we? Snake basket. So that's a sacrifice effect. Some of these, like, let's just see out of curiosity. Yeah, obviously, some of these don't really apply, it's just the way the wordings combined. Like I said, I could have been a bit cleverer with the searches there. But you always kick up fun things like this, like trading post. There was a... I'm sure I remember a commander deck which has... does wacky things with goat tokens. Da, da, da. 
Alright. course infinity right flooded shoreline what do we got there hmm rescue what's bounce something you control okay so that's referred to as rescue I didn't know that. Did everybody else? Found something you control. So... Is that something we see a lot in the chart? First time we sort of saw it was on hallowed ground. See, these are a bit of a variant here. So, chant creature. You control enchanted creature. At the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice vapor snare unless you return a land you control to its owner's hand. How is that? Yeah, okay. So that's a bounce spell. It's capturing something. I'm always curious when stuff bounces lands like the wording um so you can see here this this is super interesting because you know you get to return a target land you control and if that particular um, land is a utility land with an etb that's obviously super powerful this one specifically refers to as an island so you'd have to find something that was both you know an island and had some interesting um enters the battlefield ability on it i suppose also leaves the battlefield could be another thing uh, impulse sure we've looked at this before anticipate and shimmer of possibility and yep so here impulse means look at the top end cards and put one plus of them into your hand not to be confused with reds yeah we have looked at this before so i will quickly just see all of the instant type impulse effects and at what point it became a thing. I'll be repeating myself from the previous week but never mind. So fact or fiction, worldly council, reviving vapors, 31 cards. Prophetic bolt, so maybe Interesting here to look at things that aren't blue cards. Is there anything that doesn't have blue at all in it? So we've got 
Oh, this strange one, yeah, Wasteful Harvest. You mill five cards. You may put a permanent card from among the cards milled this way into your hand. It's an interesting way of combining that up, you know. So here was Impulse. Look at the top four cards of your library. Put one of them in your hand and the rest on the bottom of the library. So you can see why that will be in green, um, connected like with the reanimation deck. This one, Shadow Prophecy 2 in the Black Domain. Look at the top X cards of your library where X is a number of basic land types among lands you control. Put up to two of them into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. You lose two's life. Dark Bargain. So yeah, no surprising to see any of the the black cards here that do a similar thing. There's additional uh, charge, if you like. Additional cost, sorry. And uh, normally it, re it revolves around you losing life in some capacity. I can see it sort of being combined up with red because you get more of like the rummaging type effects in red. Or this like this where they've just stapled it together with a, a damage uh, spell. Desertion. Nice old work. That was in Conspiracy. Oh, I think the Commander's Arsenal as well. bit of a side tangent but this is what this episode is all about what was actually in the commander's arsenal um i it's not that i ignored it i just couldn't afford it at the time um, it was a bit of a silly thing for them to do i wish they you know it was the the official commander product for would it be 2012 because there were no decks out that year there were no commander decks out that year so they took that out instead but it was really hard to get hold of Oh, them super expensive at the time, and uh, I think that should have been much more readily available. That was a, and you know, again, stuff stuff like that. It would have been nice. I don't know. Put some nice lands in it. Yeah, you know, that's, that's my solution to all of this. Where they, they just like put, you know, fifteen cards in the product or whatever. Stick some lands in as well. Stick some nice artwork lands. So set. M1 What did we get? Oh yeah, that's right, Mirari's like I think I do Yeah, didn't I make a point? Because I wanted to do a, um, so one of the problems of doing um, these episodes on the fly is I can't sort of do a preliminary fact fact check because I don't know what I'm looking up. But I do remember there was a product where I actually, I'm probably thinking of maybe another one of those. Um, all foil sets that they created and if you remember those and there was one that I wanted to talk about and I remember not having it but buying some singles but yeah I, yeah, it's an, and I, I just have I'm sure I have a foil copy of Marari's Wake somewhere and I could again I could be wrong that's what makes me 
think of this, but I don't, I don't think this was a set I did this. Um, I mean, on the positive side, if you look down here, um, you know, some of these, the legendaries, they cropped up in later Commander decks and sets with Edric. When was that? Yeah, because Edric was in Conspiracy and in the Commander 2011. So that was a bit of a weird thing to do. I suppose that's what, because then they could do it in foil. Because it went to the Mimeoplasm. Was a Commander? I do not understand really. Why did they put it in the following year's arsenal as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This, yeah, this funny. It was this. This product was really snapped up. I mean, you could sort of see why, I suppose, because there's certain things in here like <laughs> Sylvan Library, um, but some odd includes considering the fact that this was already in the previous year. Hmm. Or scroll rack from way back Tempest, yes. Also in the World Championship decks. Yes, yeah, so you can see some things. Oh, what was Marari White? That was from Judgment. Yeah. I mean, I do know that over time, obviously, some cards that were in, you know, Commander decks, but they were then um, not reprinted. Uh, obviously, the prices on them goes through the roof. Hmm. Theft cast. Okay, so that is a thing, right? Because that's what I was interested in. Theft cast, it's called. Okay, or well, at least on Scryfall, anyway. Good to know. Ooh, word of command, creepy. Yeah, I suppose this is the thing I associate that sort of stuff with. Um, to some degree. I mean, you know, you obviously acknowledge that blue is a colour for doing that sort of things. Um, is it word of command? Is that the right one? But yeah, there's a whole ton of blue cards that, that steal stuff. It was just this interesting combination of um, counter spell with um, the fact that you, instead of it go well it goes to you basically which I thought was pretty cool and just separate these out a bit so um, 65 times in blue And what about, because it's instant speed, I believe, so, oh, what sort of things have we seen at instant speed in blue? That was more of an exchange there. It's interesting, you actually gain, this one you gain control of the target spell. So this is, yeah, this is more flexible than that, but it's an extra mana of any colour. 
So now I've narrowed that down a bit. Command the chaff. And that was in a command product. Yeah, and the only time. Okay. Cool. Oh, of course, boomerang, yes. Now, when do I, what do I remember this from? Yeah, well, it's got to be 10th edition, hasn't it? Yeah. Got to be 10th edition. Legends, okay. Reprinted in Chronicles. And then the core set uh, thereafter. Okay. We have nowhere. Don't open its hand. Yep. And regress. Okay, yep. That's slightly more expensive. Yes, yeah, so bounce. And all the different types of removal here. Removal permanent bounce. Only 50. Oh yeah, capsize. That's the one, isn't it? Because you get the ability to buy it back. Okay. There's quite a few old boarded stuff here. Oh yeah, cryptic command of course. Yeah, it's cool when it's on a modal spell. Actually. split second thing so as long as the spell is on the stack players can't play spells or activated abilities that aren't mana abilities so what's that even even faster than instant speed rift wing yeah i thought i'd seen this in a few uh dual decks over the years it's funny, I think I've said this before, you know, where you... Oh, and I do this anyway, I sort of look at cards and go, yeah, I wonder where I saw that for the first time, or... You know, just... Like, this is a good example, because... I've, you know, I have opened Time Spiral pack, packs, but this just sticks in my head, the artwork particularly. And I think, you know, why is that? Um, it can't be through just opening just the few packs as I did which was what the equivalent of about 10 packs maybe and and then it's I look and I go yeah yeah I remember doing unboxings for that product or oh, it's been in multiple products it's interesting we got uh, there with cycling stapled on it and of course recall hasn't that 
cropped up in hmm, probably another one I remember from this deck. I've not opened much invasion if hardly in probably like one pack. It's also funny how artwork makes you think of things, but suddenly looking at this dispersing orb, it makes me think of the band Osric tentacles. Um, and it's because of the, the orb, I think there's a, um, there's some album artwork where they've got like a wizard walking on orbs. I'm trying to remember the name of the album, actually. I was just listening to them last weekend. Okay, there with Storm. All right. Artifact. <laughs> Anybody would think I have a thing about artifacts. Oh, yes, Lost in the Mist. Wow, three and two blue. It's a big, big difference. Interesting wording as well. Um, I'm going to get to talk about a little bit about that in, uh, like I said, that additional commander fodder episode I'm doing. Um, because the issue of um, Oracle text does come up in, in quite an interesting way, actually. So dissipate. So this is where you're exiling after yeah you know, counterspell exile so devious cover up similar to void shatter uh, that's the one with devoid on it and it's a oh, reference by syncopate and of course if you're familiar with cancel it's better than cancel so with cancel for two and a blue you get to counter target spell but with dissipate you get to exile it so counterspell exile, that's what I'm interested in. Okay. Is the first printing. So yeah, it starts with dissipate. And oh yeah, horribly awry. And ends with Herkel's final meditation. Where you get to return all non-land permanents to their owner's hands in the turn. Oh, it's because it's got exile all spells and abilities from the stack. Right. So... I'm just trying to see one that's same-ish. Deny the divine. Two and a blue. That does creatures or enchantment spells. Yeah, this does anything. Most of them look like they've got some sort of condition on them, don't they? Summary dismissal, exile all other spells and counter all abilities. Mm, some additional stuff as well. Memory lapse, which I'm sure we've seen before in these episodes. But let's have a look at the counterspell tuck. 
Okay, that does surprise me. Oh, that spell crumple. The artwork from Homelands, of course. Okay, I need to probably start taking the notes. I've just seen something. <laughs> okay, hang on. I'm just going to write this card down. I'll probably forget, even though I've written it down. Lots of certainty. Sort of thinking, why is he planning? It's going on in his head. Oh, yes, hinder. Of course, these were always of interest when you could, uh, you could uh, tuck an unruly commander. Okay, we're now finally onto the creatures. I have no idea how long this episode is going to last. There's a couple of jewel decks there. Right, so worse than living tsunami. Beginning your upkeep, sacrifice living tsunami unless you return a land you control to. That's a 4 4 for 4 with flying. Okay, so that's returning any land to your hand. So again, yeah, much more utility. Because here, you know, if you, the only thing you can really leverage is if you happen to have any, you know, anything that was an island and had an ETB ability on it. If that's even such a thing. Four, 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 fours. Okay, yeah, so four, 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 fours, really. Just seeing what, if anything, is a downside. Draw back, rescue, rescue land. We, yeah, we did look at that. Um, I don't know if there's anything else I really want to... I mean, one thing, just as a... thing, if you do... CMC, I suspect there's going to be tons, CMC 4, power 4, in blue. So 16 cards. So yeah, I'm just curious about four fours for four in blue. Where did I go wrong there? Oh, I see why. What threw me? I don't remember you have to do that afterwards. And there's water spout. So illusionary forces 
So that had a cumulative upkeep on it. That one had phasing. This was from an unset. Do we ever get a 4 4 for 4 without a downside? With I didn't even show, I should have put flying in there, but that's interesting. I didn't specifically mention flying, but all of these in blue, I think. Is there any exception here? Flying. Hmm. Let me just check. That one there. Whenever you cycle discarding the cost cry one, cycling blues, need to have a downside. Neither does that. That's the pan size reduction. I'm assuming and this is always interesting. Is there anything ridiculous? Like a four four for three. Interesting. Four, 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 three. So the only thing you have to make sure you do is, well, cast another spell. So of course you've got to make sure you've got enough mana to do that. I suppose you could brainstorm. Floodgate. Oh yeah, this one. What the hell is this similar to? If anything. So if floodgate gains flying, bury it. Make these play deals to each non-land. Sorry, non-blue creature without flying. One damage. It's two islands you control. It's quite... Sweeper creature burn. Let me just look at that. See what's categorised as earthquake. Is there anything else that's under that tag in blue? Chippewa and Lumia. What else have we got? What is a fraction? Is that because it's one for each two? I suppose so. Yeah. Is that what they categorise as being fraction as attack? I mean, I always associate fraction cards with the unsets, but uh, it's obviously a term they're using for tagging that basically means anything that's yeah, half of something, or one over two, or one over something. Yeah, I suppose that's how they're using it. Dark Sphere. Hmm. Sweep a creature burn. Is that a thing we see elsewhere in blue? Um, huh, 
this curse, volcanic eruption. Not really. Cloud elemental. High flying. What is flying creatures that can only block other flying creatures? Oh, okay. Interesting term. What have we got? Uh, we got chaos sphere an enchantment but what about when a, applied just to creatures what do we see cloud elemental how many times has that been oh there we go yeah 10th edition again <laughs> magic 2011 That must have been a thing in Portal. Then. Oh, Macadian Masks. There's quite a number in there, isn't there? What are this? This is Nemesis, a couple in there. Of course, old Storm, yeah, Stormbound Geist. Right. What about ones that are specifically on that part of the curve? Got nine. Wonderlight spirit. It's a two three. There's a lot of two threes here. Might say a lot. <laughs> three, I suppose. Oh Skywinder Dre, right? yeah, three one. Do we see on um, how much do we see on other parts of the curve? Four, five. Is that greater than five? Some big stuff. Small stuff. Very small stuff. Man of War. Oh yeah, the Magic Online theme decks. I'm just looking to see when it's actually been in some sort of regular set. What was that? Dominaria Remastered. I suppose the answer is it hasn't. Hmm. Oh, okay. Wow. But there's lots of cards that it's similar to. That might explain why then. Removal creature bounce. Hmm. So we've got Ether Adept, Dead Eye Recaller, Kiri Owner, Moonlight Scavengers, Reflector Mage, Skin Scarer, Void Welder. Wow. Merc Strider. Oh, Horsemanship, of course. <laughs> and Venza. Winter Eladrin. And they are all similar to.
mind harness. So we're now getting onto the cards which were exclusively in the sideboard. Yeah, so creature theft. I'm glad this came up actually because we can talk about this because I just talked about it in passing. Um, and yeah, control magic. That's the one. And then you can see all sorts of ones through history. Now, the one I remember more than anything, just because of the... Oh, there's, of course, Gilded Drake. How much is that now? $251. So I'm just trying to find... The one I'm thinking of. I can't even remember the creature like the card type but there was one in it wasn't domestication mm. yeah I'm not sure now I know this switcheroo which is a slightly different way of doing it Mass manipulation. Well, there's certainly a lot. Um, so the card I'm thinking of is a blue spell, definitely. The old man of the sea. Is it mind control I'm thinking of? And I just remember, yeah, that, yeah, because I, for some reason I remember this artwork. Yeah, okay. So it is mind control. Yeah. Three and two blue for an enchantment. And then the one we were looking at, which of course I can't now find. Oh, mine on it's a single blue, but it's only red or green, and it has cumulative upkeep on it. Honorable Passage, one I'm sure we've looked at before. And damage redirection, the first thing, and then you get this burn. And it, uh, it was part of a cycle. If you don't remember, it's that one. And I'm sure damage redirection is or damage prevention um, is in magic quite a bit. Oh. <laughs> Now, if I go into what yeah, so much stuff. Oh, Pariah, probably so. Would it say? I wonder if it'll have the combo in here. Probably not. Yeah, there is a legend, and it, I just can't remember what it is. Um, I think it. I think it is. Is it one in blue? There's something that combos up really effectively with. 
like a you know that yeah, this redirects um, to an enchanted creature, but then the enchanted creature um, nerfs all the damage. Maybe it's another white legend I'm thinking of. And then power sync. Finishing up here. So land tappers are an interesting thing, of which that has something about tapping land in its claws. Claws as in claws as opposed to creature claws. Um, yeah. You know, if you remember when we did the No Hand No Land series, because I think more worms came up. Sands of time. Tap up to three lands, early frost. What's the most recent thing that taps down lands? What's this? So is that from oh Yep, it's an elk, of course it's an alchemy card. Tafiri. So there's a mixed mixed bag here. There's some stuff that taps lands, there's other stuff that you know um will tap the land when you activate it or play it as a spell and then there's, there's other things here and then we'll see it being stapled to creatures as well uh, mana leech vicious helix and yeah re Richard and Port, um, it's interesting, pretty pricey, there is a Masters 25 version and that leads in to, are there many lands that tap lands, lands that tap lands, Wintermoon Visa, but you have to sack it. How much is that? 36 by uh, 36. Do, um, start again. 36 cents. So, creature wise, so it's 16 creatures that have that sort of effect. And how much do we see it on instance? Yeah, quite a few. And one apart from this blue black one, all mono blue. As a sorcery, not so much. Did I do. I think I did enchantment. Is it on a is it on a planeswalker? Maybe? Oh, just to theory, yeah. And save the best till last. Oh tangle wire. Hmm. 
Whenever any land target opponent controls is tapped for mana, tap all lands he or she controls that can produce any type of mana that land can produce. Okay. Yeah, I can see why that might be 15 bucks. That's interesting. Hmm. Yeah, there's no way I would have opened one of those at some point. Is there anything here that's good and affordable? Of course, we've got Icy Manipulator, which, yeah, has been... Let's just look at that. Yeah, I thought it cropped up a few more times. Hmm. I'm sure I have a copy of this somewhere. Which is the ice are you on? Okay. Okay, there we have it. Hopefully you've enjoyed this rather random trip down memory lane and then looking into the future in terms of uh, similar cards I certainly do enjoy putting these together I know they're very rambly and very long but I suppose the answer is to pick a good beverage before you start watching these or probably they send a lot of people to sleep actually um, chill people out hopefully that's the that's the uh, the long-term goal I suppose so thanks once again for watching bye for now and I will catch you in the next episode.